Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. And times are a changing with the Sharks. Major front office news with Doug Wilson Jr. no longer part of the organization. We have qualifying offers to discuss. And we have a development uh, camp roster as well. So a jam-packed episode of Locked on Sharks coming at you right now. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now and Fear the Fan. Of course, I want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And of course, you can find us on YouTube as well. And major changes coming to the Sharks. You know, Mike Greer has been in office now, I guess, for, for about a week. And we're starting to see his vision of the team kind of unfold a little bit. So, of course, the big news, Doug Wilson Jr. is no longer with the San Jose Sharks. Um he, him and the Sharks felt it was a mutual decision to, to part ways and allow him to, you know, go look for, you know, he'll be, somebody's going to hire him very soon. He's, he's too smart and to not be hired. But, um, you know, it felt like maybe there was a kind of, it could have a couple of things here. It could have been maybe with Doug Wilson Sr., uh, leaving the organization, maybe Doug Wilson Jr. hung around for a little bit, um, you know, kind of to they he already put in all this work with with the the draft and then decided to move there. You know, I'm maybe him and Greer just didn't mesh very well. Who knows what it is? But yeah, Doug Wilson Jr. no longer part of the Sharks. He'd been with the Sharks since uh 2012 and moved up to the director of scouting in 2018. Um, credited for for drafting such guys as Josh Norris, who's looking like he's gonna be a, a great player for the Sens, Mario Ferraro, Ryan Merkley, William Eklund, Thomas Bordolo, just to name a few. I mean, look at that 2020 draft class. So he is, uh, yeah, so Doug Wilson Jr. Um, is out. You know, I, I, I'm i not shocked, you know, I think with a, a new GM coming in, wanting to get his guys. And I don't know if Mike Greer's vision, and again, this is just me speculating, but I don't know if Mike Greer's vision and Doug Wilson Jr.'s vision, maybe if they totally aligned on what type of players they are looking for, especially when it comes to the draft. So um, I... Fan of, Doug, I mean, I've, you know, talked with Doug Wilson Jr., uh, you know, but I, I really liked his drafting style. I liked the players he was looking for. And, you know, I don't think he'll be a free agent for very long. And some team's going to hire him. And it's probably going to be a pretty smart move. But um, with that, also, uh, you know, Mike Greer also said Tim Burke has been a long time, been around for here for a long time, and I trust him. So as far as I'm concerned, he will be here with the Sharks for a while. So I don't think Burke is going anywhere um, as well. Then the Sharks also announced that they hired Doug Waite as a the hockey operations advisor. Uh, he formerly worked for the Islanders. Uh, he was assistant GM slash assistant coach from 2011 um, until 2016, where 2017, where he got promoted to an interim coach, um, held down that spot until Barry Trotz arrived, and then he was promoted to a senior advisor in the 1819 season with uh, the Islanders, and he has now been hired to be a hockey operations advisor. So in Mike Greer's inner circle, so we were seeing Mike Greer starting to get his guys into place here. And, you know, I'm wondering if we're, you know, we, as we're going to get to with the qualifying offers here in a minute where, you know, Mike Greer team mentioned, he wants a physical in your face team. And if there's anybody who's played that, that style of hockey the past few years, it's been the Islanders. So you wonder if they're going to be, the Sharks are going to be kind of transforming into one of these, very defensive, hard to play against teams who try to scrap out 
two to one wins and, you know, three to two wins, um, you know, going forward. We'll see but there's still a lot of questions that need to be answered, including, you know, who's going to be the head coach. And, you know, now they're going to have to look at, uh, you know, the new scouting department, especially with Doug Wilson Jr. gone. And there was, you know, a couple of scouts that were retiring. And unfortunately, you know, uh, with Mush's unfortunate passing, so they're, it's an area of, of need now for the Sharks of having to kind of rebuild that scouting department. Um, and yeah, so. And then, of course, more news out of Mike Greer's press conference today was that um, the potential of a, you know, hasn't closed the door on a potential Brent Burns trade. Um, this, you know, he said uh, that he's going to kind of let Brent Burns lead the way on there. So the Sharks talked to, he talked about in his opening, you know, in his, his introductory press conference of, wanting to get some of that cap flexibility and that was a big priority for them and you know brent burns is arguably one of the best trade chips that you have where it would create the goal of freeing up cap space but also being able to actually get something of quality and return back um so we'll see it's been little perks and stuff you know elliot freeman kind of talked about it as well today and you know, little perks and bubbles of a potential deal. I mean, he, Elliot Friedman, did name the stars. I think there would have to be some move, you know, potential sharks, you know, keeping cap space, but, uh, you know, retaining cap space for, for it to work, especially because the stars do have some big contracts coming up on the horizon. But I, I'm curious if this is going to be kind of the first domino in you know, how Mike Greer is really going to try to reshape the team here. So if that happens, especially um, that, that that'll leave getting the rock, who's not actually on the Sharks roster, Ryan Merkley and Eric Carlson is the right-handed defenseman. So we'll probably on uh Tuesday show or Wednesday, was it? Wednesday show, we'll probably look at some uh, realistic free agents that the Sharks might be signing now that we've gotten through all the qualifying offers and who's actually available on the market. But um, before we get to the qualifying offers for the Sharks, let's go ahead and take a quick break. Uh, talk to you guys about our friends over at Built Bar. You guys know Built Bar, the best tasting uh, bar on the best best tasting protein bar on the market. Uh, they have an amazing amount of flavors, and right now they have coconut brownie chunk puff. It's deliciously chewy marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. It's like a fluffy cloud of coconut brownie goodness. And you can stop the drooling because not only are they good for you, they're low calorie, low sugar, high protein, and all of this is delicious. So head over to the website right now at built.com. Go check out the coconut brownie chunk puff or any of their amazing flavors that they have. And when you guys go to check out, make sure you use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. Again, use the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. And of course, you guys don't know by now, 10 athletes, you and your friends debate about who's actually the better athlete. Now with 10athletes.com, they have a formula that rates you from 1 to 10 as an athlete. And 1 to 10 in over 300 sports and games you play in real life. So simply create your own athlete profile and start submitting your game results to see who is the best athlete in your backyard the blocker even the world so if you and your friends play golf if you and your friends play cornhole whatever you can compare with your friends to see who is the best athlete 10 athletes.com is becoming the social network for playing sports accounts are being created every day so go get your favorite username while it lasts Create your athlete profile at 10athletes.com. Find out how good of an athlete you really are. Are you athletic enough to hold a coveted title of best athlete in the world? From 1 to 10, how good are you? 10athletes.com, where fun must be always. All right. And, of course, today was the deadline for the uh, teams to extend their qualifying offers. So, again, a, a quick reminder of what that means is the kind of puts a tag on these guys of, yes, we want to try to work on, you know, to getting a contract with them. Uh, the teams can always rescind uh, the offers. So, for example, if the Sharks decide, 
they splurge and sign somebody and they're like, oh, wow, we don't have the cap right space for these. They can resend these offers and let them kind of become unrestricted free agents. Um, it happens every once in a while. You know, you, you'll see a couple every year uh, type of situation. But um, so, of course, the the names uh, that the Sharks have tagged as Coffin offers, um, none of these guys are too much of a surprise. Sasha Shmulevsky kind of figured that that was, that was maybe the only questionable one, but he played really well with the Sharks at the end of last season. I think they want to kind of continue to see um, how he develops. Mario Ferraro, no brainer. They're going to get a deal done there. Um, Jonah Gadovich, uh, I know he they picked him up off waivers last year. He showed a little bit. I know some of his uh, some of his underlying stats were pretty nice. He's also a big boy who plays hard, and we know we know that Mike Greer likes that. So, um, and he's whatever. I'm sure he'll he'll bounce between the Cuda and the Sharks this year. Uh, Noah Gregor, not surprised there. He'll get a, a new deal. Uh, Capo Kakinen, again, not surprised there, especially with with them trading for him at the trade deadline. I thought. He played really well down the stretch for the Sharks, especially with the skeleton team they had in front of him at times. And of course, uh, Luke uh, Kunin, who, or, anyway, Luke Kunin, who the Sharks just acquired um, at the draft. It would be really weird to trade for him, a third round pick for him, and then not qualify him. So, um, and during those, uh, Greer has said he's, they've had good initial conversations with with Ferraro, uh, Kunin, and Kakanen. So I wouldn't be shocked if those. I mean, those guys will get deals done. I think um, if I had to prioritize them, I would probably say Ferraro then Kakanen and then, then Kunin, um, just because Ferraro is you know he's alternate cap and he's been there for a while. Um, he's going to be a piece for you going forward. Even though I thought he had a down year last year, but. He's still young, and Mario Farr is going to be part of your long-term plan. So now the not offered players. So these players, these Sharks, have decided that they are letting them go out into the free agency to test free agency. It doesn't mean that they're, you know, if the Sharks want to, they could resign them um, type of situation. We'll see. I mean, I, I think some of these guys will see how they scatter, but uh, Joachim Blickfeld, Jonathan Dolan, Zach Gallant, uh, Jake McGrew, Nicholas Malash, um, Antoine Morand, uh, Brinson Pashnuk, and Zach Sawchenko. We'll start with Dolan. So, uh, of course, Sharks Twitter has been, yes, a hot mess trying to, you know, argue the the merits of Jonathan Dolan and if he's a good player or not or and stuff and. Mike Greer said on not qualifying Dallin, there's a certain type of profile of player, things that we're looking for to make this team mold into the type of team that I would like it to be. He doesn't really fit that profile right now. It all starts with competitiveness. And that doesn't always have to mean that they're the biggest guy in the room, but it's got to be a high level in competitiveness and hardness. And you'll probably see a little bit more of that coming to the organization. So I think they felt that if Dallin can't compete, be a consistent goal scorer, a top six winger. Um, and he's not much suited for a, a bottom six role um, of, you know, playing bottom six minutes, uh, you know, kind of being that four checker and that checking line and playing a defensive role or, you know, kind of suited for that, that they felt it wasn't worth trying to, I guess, shove a square peg into a round hole. And I get that very much that maybe, you know, Dallin, you know, he does have his limitations. We, you know, he is, he can be a, a fantastic goal scorer, but you know, he does, if he's not scoring goals, what else can Dallin do for you? And I, I guess they felt that he, it was better just let him go and try to kind of fill the, the those points elsewhere. And I, I still think it's a little premature to give up on a guy after 61 NHL games um, who showed flashes at the beginning of the season playing those top six minutes of, you know, scoring and being secondary scoring. And, you know, once I think that shoulder injury really, really screwed him up and, you know, he tried to play through it and then he got COVID and a concussion and, you know, kind of things snowballed from there and he wasn't ever really able to find his, 
his feet, you know, kind of footing once again, once the season got going. It, but yeah, I mean, you could have qualified an offer, try to maybe come up with, you know, a one year kind of prove a deal with him. But yep. Uh, au revoir, <laughs> Jonathan Tallinn. I'm, I'm excited for you to score, get signed by like the Lightning and score 20 goals next year for the Lightning. But anyway, um, maybe another kind of surprising name. You know, a couple of other ones. Nicholas Malash, who was playing a, a fair amount of minutes for the Sharks last year. Again, I, I don't know if maybe they felt he wasn't kind of, you know, progressing as well as they liked. You know, we, we know they have a bit of a log jam on the left side um, of, of prospects, and maybe he kind of, they felt he wasn't, he's kind of a tweener right now, maybe not quite good enough for the NHL, but then you're taking value, valuable minutes from the AHL guys who need those those minutes to help develop right now. Um, Prince of Pashnuk, who... You know, I know he he dealt with his, his injuries, and so um, I hope he he does better and can kind of help get his career on track. And then Zach Slavchenko was the other one. So, um, especially with the Cuda right now, so you have Straussman and you have uh, Iman both under contract, and I think it's probably going to be Straussman's uh, net going into next year. So again, I think he's another one of those guys where you already have a log jam at top with three goalies on the NHL roster. And then you've got two in the the CUDA. So I think there is just a numbers game right there. And, you know, as much as like, I wouldn't be surprised if Sachinko, he'll probably be playing on an AHL team next year. But, um, you know, I I think they, we saw what they thought with the shark thought of Sachinko when they didn't, play him when James Reimer started 13 games in a row. So yeah, so those are the, uh, the, the qualifying offers. So that most of those guys, so those guys should be on the sharks this year, unless something crazy happens, you know, they're going to work out contracts and uh, with, with those guys and, and get them on the sharks. So um, before we continue to look at the development camp roster that, that came out, uh, let's go ahead and take, just want to let you guys know, of course, about the Locked On NHL show. As soon as you're done listening to this one, go check out that one. They're going to get you all covered with all the news, the biggest news and stories, uh, especially with free agency this week. Uh, we're going to have a nice uh, roundtable discussion during free agency on Wednesday. So I think that'll be like from 9 a.m. to, to noon Pacific time. Um, so if you want to kind of, they're going to have like a big chat and open kind of roundtable and Posts are going to be popping in and out. So make sure you guys go check that out. Yeah. Locked on NHL, wherever you get podcasts, YouTube uh, as well. So, okay. Some positive, we have the development camp roster that was actually announced today. So, um, most everybody is is, is going to be part of it. So they did kind of make some changes for it this year instead of uh, kind of just playing one big game. It's actually going to be a three-on-three round-robin uh, round tournament, which is kind of interesting, um, kind of like the All-Star game where, you know, we're going to be playing three-on-three and, and, you know, just score a bunch of goals that way and have a bunch of fun with that. So um, so if you're in San Jose, it's, it's on Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, at the uh, North Rink. So I know SAP Center, they're working on the new scoreboard, of course. And I don't think they want to showcase the new scoreboard for a uh, prospect scrimmage game. And, of course, the, the um, new Barracuda Arena isn't quite ready yet. So I think they're having the, that's why they're having it at uh, the Solar uh, Sharks Ice um, there. But... It'll be on. They're also going to have it on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and sharks.com. So you guys can actually watch it there. Um, but I mean, basically all the, everybody's going to be there with the exception of Daniel Rock, who's dealing with, uh, I think he has surgery on lower body injury. So head surgery. He's hoping to be ready for uh, camp for team Canada with the world juniors. Um, and then um, Magnus Krona, who was there last year, but isn't, was not on there right now. So, but yeah, all the, the kind of the main guys, we're going to see the, the 2022 draft class for the first time as well. Um, you know, so Phil Bystead, I always like to see their numbers, which is kind of weird because it, it, I, like, I think they give numbers to, to some of the guys. So like Bystead's already got a number that's like, he's number 20. Um, 
Cameron Lund, who was a second round pick this year, he's 21. So I always like to see kind of what number I think it, I don't know why to me, it just kind of maybe what they think of them or, or in, and stuff. So um, Mitchell Russell, one of the, sh the shark signings this off season, 64. Um, again, sorry, this, I know this is kind of dumb, but uh, some of the guys kind of big names who are going to be there, of course, uh, Jasper Weatherby is going to be there. Um, so he played a, a bunch of games with the sharks last year, Ryan Merkley, so I think they like having some of these guys who actually have NHL experience around to kind of help be adults in the room and kind of help these, these kids out. So, um, but yeah, so here's the forwards, Bordelow, Bicet, Cardwell, Co., Eklund, uh, Mark Gallant, Daniel Gushin, TJ Hughes, who's supposed to, who's going to be playing in Michigan next year, who's supposed to be playing in Michigan next year. So I guess they wanted him to kind of come out and Maybe if they like him, they might, instead of him going to Michigan, offer him a contract to go play with, with the, the Barracuda. Uh, Reese Labak, uh, Cameron Lund, uh, Joey Maldone, uh, Adam Raska, Scott Reedy, Tristan Robbins, Mitchell Russell, uh, Timothy Spitzeroff, Jasper Weatherby, Ozzy Weisblatt, and Alex Young, uh, my cousin, not cousin. So kind of I'm really interested to see how they split up those teams on defense. Uh, Eli Barnett, Nick Chichek, uh, Michael Fisher, who took uh, John Leonard's number 43 before it was uh, already not even cold yet. But um, 46, uh, Jake Furlong, um, Artemi Gurev. Uh, so I'm really interested to see him because he kind of missed a lot last year with with a wrist injury. So I want to kind of see how how he's progressing. Um, Sanitary uh, Hadaka, uh, Havled is going to be there. Nolan Joyce looks like it's uh, they're going to let him kind of come in and try out as well. He's a Massachusetts, uh, went to prep school last year. So, uh, Evgeny uh, Kanishikov, uh, who played in the queue last year, he's interesting because he's I don't think he's going to be back on his uh, his team in the queue because they're. You know, they can only have so many overagers, so he could sign with another team in the queue, or maybe the Sharks give him a, a con give him his ELC so he can start playing uh, with the the Barracuda this year. So very interesting with, with how he progresses. So I think if he has a strong camp, he'll probably get his ELC. Uh, who else do we have? Samuel Meyer, who plays in uh, Petersburg. Uh, Ryan Merkley and uh, Montana Onyabuchi. And then the goaltenders, we have uh, Mason uh, Bopit, who the Sharks just drafted, wearing number 30, Zachary Imond, um, the GOAT, Benjamin Gaudreau, Strauss Mann, uh, Owen Millard, and Adian Spooner. So I guess some more kind of uh, guys come in, give them a little bit of a tryout from there. So, yeah, so I'll be actually doing a uh, episode. I'll do an episode for... Uh, Thursday night after the, the prospect game. So we can talk about that for some reason, the prospect game last year was one of our most prospect reaction game was one of our most downloaded episodes of all time. Uh, for, so we'll, we'll talk about that and uh, what happens at the prospect game. So um, that's going to do it today. Make sure you guys are locked in here. Cause I'm, I'm sure there's going to be more news and stuff coming out. Um, so again, tomorrow, depending on as long as there's not any, crazy news but we'll, we'll look at some realistic free agents that, that are on the market for the sharks that they can kind of go coupon shopping with and then um yeah and then of course free agency will anything that happens will be around to uh to react to that so um thank you guys of course for making us your first listen free and available wherever you get podcasts apple spotify odyssey you know the, the deal um, you can find the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. Also, please uh, subscribe on YouTube as well. Um, so they post actually the night before on YouTube premiere. You can watch them. There's a bunch of Sharks people that like to watch them talk in the, the, the chat and have comments about the show's episodes as well. So um, make sure you guys check it out on YouTube. Go check out the Locked on NHL show. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at MyFryHole. And be back tomorrow with uh, some free agents for the Sharks. Bye, friends.